Okay, so check it out. You're probably thinking, Derek, what the heck was that first lick? But I showed that lick before. Go watch the tutorial. It wasn't that long ago. Uh, it's a pentatonic lick. Anyway, that wasn't it. Let me show you exactly what I was talking about. Before we get into it, if you haven't visited the Bass Nation Academy by now, I strongly suggest you go do so. There's much more available at DerekBennett.com, including hours and hours of step-by-step -step tutorials that'll help guide you to that next level. On top of that, there's loads of topics and categories that we cover. There's even access to full interviews with some amazing bass players, as well as live stream webinars exclusively for members only. All right, guys, so head over and check it out for simply no cost to you at all. You get a free three-day trial to go ahead and poke around the site and see how it fits you. So links to the Bass Nation Academy can be found in the description below. And I also put some other links in there. I know you guys ask me a lot about what gear I use. I'll put those links down there as well. All right, guys, so enough of that. You can either go check it out now or when you're done watching this video on to the lesson very very simple i was actually just creating a bass line just trying to implement a triad in there just in the key of f minor so what i meant by the context of how it was challenging inside of it is where it's placed at in the measure uh, of the groove so let me show you the let me show you the lick first so i'm doing the octave i'm actually not playing it down here i'm playing playing it up here starting on the 8th fret, on the F, A flat, 4th finger. Now, the thing about this is I'm actually shifting. Let me show you the lick first. Okay, very, you've heard this in a lot of gospel bass players play this type of lick, but let me show you exactly what I did. So I shifted, I used a triad, very simple. When I got to the C, F, A flat, C, shift with the 1st finger, you see that? And I just borrowed that with my first finger stayed right there on that fret to play that F, the high octave. All right, then I played G, then G sharp. Okay, so you see what I mean? So I got F minor, uh, one, three, five, that's the triad, octave, nine, ten. Okay? Or either way you think about it. And then on the F minor, seven chord. So, so let me put it into context. So it actually lands pretty quick on a downbeat of three, but that's after you finish. All right, which is the original bass line I'm doing one, five, seven, minor seven. Right? So, so one, two, right? So you don't have to play that whole bass line, you can play it as just quarter notes so you can actually get the timing down. Boom. All right, that's a way to practice it first, but once you want to implement it in, you know, a more, you know, challenging bass line, which is really not challenging, it's just two more notes. Okay, so let me show you one more time. You're playing the F minor triad starting on the eighth fret on the A string. So one, four, shift, one, one, right? Three, four, one, two. Okay, so you're playing C, C sharp. So hold it out, and then you come back in on the original bass line groove. But the funny thing about this lick, I was just trying to show a way to implement a triad inside of a bass line, just using a minor seven groove or F minor seven groove, doesn't matter what key you're in. So I just played the F minor, came up with a groove, tried to implement the triad in there, but I ended up kind of branching off and getting some more ideas and just creating a lick out of it. It can be that simple, just taking one concept and running with it. Because at the end, I started kind of shifting a little bit more. I started, I ended on an E flat seven sus, you know, the, you know, to try to switch it up a little bit instead of just ending on the, the F. I mean, you're not really ending on a root note because you're just playing just leaving it open for a minute right but that's the effect so you can end up wherever you want you can end on the F minor 7 you don't have to end on the F minor 7 at all you can just leave that interval by itself anyway guys I hope you got the concept I'll try to have this written out for you guys so I'm gonna play it as always one more time and then we're out of here